Hello everybody, Dr. S here and we're at week eight and I want to talk to you about the stance essay that we're about to do. Thank you for submitting your informative essay. So what we're doing is you've got your topic and you did your personal essay and you gave us information about it and now you're going to take a stance. And last week in week seven in section 7.3 there was a discussion of what this essay looks like. So it discusses it. It's due in week 10 and it's worth 230 points. And you're going to take a, a stance as it takes a position on a topic and argues and supports that position with evidence. So what are your possible positions arguments? And um, I am sending you a sheet that will be helpful for you to organize what your positions and arguments are and the resources you're going to use for them you need to talk about which position resonates with you, what are your main points, you have to have three points um, and counterpoints and how do you dispute them, do you have enough evidence to support your argument, you, your stance essay, say your per perspective should come through but you're still writing it in the third person just as you did for the informative essay and you will need to support your points with credible ideas, sources. So as you can see, this entire section 7.3 really walks you through the um, how to do it, the structure, etc. Um, when you get an assignment, what is really important is for you to look at the directions up for the assignment and the rubric. So if we go to week 8, you can see here it says assignment. Now the assignment is due in week 10, but in week 8 you can see here that the instructions for the assignment are here. So they're in, in our web text, they're also in week eight, and they're also in week 10. So uh, we just went over this, uh, this part. Um, it is a three to four page, three to four page paper, third person point of view. Um, you have to have an introduction with a thesis statement with uh, three points. Number three here, supporting body with three points. Your paragraphs need to be five to seven sentences long and they each paragraph has to support each point of your thesis with relevant examples or st statistics. Do you address the opinions or concerns that your audience might have? And then making sure that you paraphrase, quote, or summarize to avoid plagiarism. You need to have logic and transitions and a conclusion where you restate the thesis a new way, new way and leave a lasting impression so that your readers continue to think about your topic when they finish reading the paper. Obviously grammar, mechanics, punctuation, and APA formatting are worth a big chunk of your paper. I believe it's 25 percent, so that's a lot. So it needs to be double space times New Roman 12 font, a cover page, in-text citations and references pages using the proper APA sourcing. And then the a uh, rubric is point of view, 10%, introduction and thesis, supporting paragraphs, transition in logic, conclusion, and grammar, me mechanics, punctuation, APA forming. Notice, you can only get a 75% if you don't do well on category 6, so pay close attention to that. And finally, I want to show you that, yes, in week 10 where it's submitted, Again, this is always what happens at Strayer. Where the assignment is submitted, there's an overview of the assignment. And then if you click on the submission button up here, notice, ladies and gentlemen, is the view rubric. And this is where you see how your paper is graded. Please note that when I open up my gradebook, I see it in this exact order. So the order in which the rubric goes is typically the order in which your paper goes. So you need to make sure you have all of these things because I have to grade you on each section of this, as you know. All right, so in week seven, it shows you the structure and you'll be writing your thesis and doing an outline. Notice introduction that always ends with this thesis statement. Reason one, you give a topic sentence and your evidence, which is your reference, and then a little analysis of it. You do that for your reason two and your reason three and then you have a conclusion and your references. So what I'd like to do now is show you um, a model paper and you can find this model paper under this little uh, right up here, the model paper, and I'm going to open it up in a um, 
larger Word document here. So this is the model paper and you'll notice you've got your running head with the header and you've got the uh, your topic and the middle material which is two inches down from the header. Notice that it's Times New Roman 12, 12 font. All right, so here you can see that you always put the title of your paper like this. You put it um, centered on the first line. And notice here's your introductory paragraph. And it has building several small parks would be the most effective way to increase urban green spaces in Birmingham because multiple parks would affect a greater number of residents, allow for flexible construction, and capitalize on the use of brownfields. So here's your stance. You're saying building these parks would be a good thing, and you have three reasons. So um, it starts out, good transitional sentence. The benefits of green space in urban areas are numerous. And they go on here to talk about um, the residents. Notice here's an in-text citation. While green spaces provide a venue for recreation and socializing, they also decrease emotional distress for the people who visit them. Authors, comma, year, in parentheses, period is always at the end of the parentheses. And notice, the writer doesn't end with just the, the creditable source. They put, say, because the current global trend is a migration to urban environments in many communities, urban green spaces may provide the citizens only opportunity to interface with nature. You have to give your analysis uh, of the material you put in there. So you have a topic sentence with your point, then your research, and then your own analysis. So it's like a hamburger bun, your topic, your research, and your analysis. Additionally, good transition, green spaces provide services that improve the quality of life in a city. So, um, and then they go on to talk about that. Um, so now they um, talk about, and according to the 2012 Birmingham Comprehensive Plan, they have all the statistics on how the planning is going along. Um, and now after they've discussed all of this first part, which is would affect a greater number of residents, one, two, three paragraphs on that, there they go on to say one reason constructing multiple small parks would be an effective approach to Birmingham's lack of green space, and that those parks would be in the proximity to many of the city's residents. So again, some more information about the residents. Um, Okay, so then they go on to talk about another reason would be uh, it is the construction of these parks can be flexible. So they're moving into the next reason. And again, here's a signal phrase, a study performed in 2013 with the information here. Um, so they're talking about the flexibility afforded by, and then they move into the third topic. This approach will capitalize on the use of brownfields. Uh, and they're discussed up here as well. The flexibility, they move in flex flexibility from flexibility to brownfields. And goes on, talks more about the plan. And then there is a, a final concluding paragraph. Uh, reference page, alphabetical order, hanging indent, notice retrieve from if you have a website. Some have a DOI number. And... Um, so that's what a model paper looks like. This week in the post, you're going to be talking about a model paper. And so that will be really important for you to really dive into this one and see what it looks like so that you can use that, have that as a background for how you're going to formulate your own paper. Um, we're coming to the end of the quarter, ladies and gentlemen. So please be certain to get in here and get going. It's going to go by really fast. So happy writing, and I wish you all the best.